We are all spiritually and emotionally puzzle pieces. All right, so you've put together a puzzle, right? And some pieces look similar, but they only, like, if you go with a very generic concept, right? You have a piece that has a protruding uh, lump, okay? And it has to be matched up with a piece that has a hole in the exact right spot and same size so that everything lines up and matches and holds together. So I want you to just keep that in mind, the shape of puzzle pieces. And with this concept that God helped me to start seeing is, have you ever noticed how you can watch other people and like they just keep ending up in the same kind of friendships, the same kind of relationships again and again and again. Or perhaps it's you, but you're noticing this. What's going on is you have a certain wound or strong point, right? It doesn't have to be a negative thing, but it is attracted to other elements that match that. So in the case of negatives, you have a girl who just keeps ending up with abusive boyfriends. So what's going on? You know, and, and Jesus is the only one, you know, you have to have conversation with God because it's not a one size fits all diagnosis. Is she the girl that is so desperate for somebody to love her that the first acknowledgement, I don't know. Right. But maybe it's not relationships in that manner. What if it's friendships? And this is how I came to understand the concept. So I'm going to just share a little bit and we'll change names. And so we'll call Susie and Diane, okay? So this did not happen in one setting. I was friends with, we'll call her Diane, because so not her name. <laughs> and um, it became a normal for this person to contact me and want to spend hours on the phone talking about the things I talk to you guys about. Like, I, I love discussing what God is doing in your life and, and what's happening and help you, you know, go deep with that. But one day, God points out to me, like, she gets 10 hours of your time every single week. She calls Monday through Friday while your husband's at work and your kids are at school, so she knows that you will not object because she was calling all the time, but in the evenings. And I would, my husband is like, you're on the phone with her more than like we get to spend time with you. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, right? Like, you know, I'm trying to be a good friend, but not at the sacrifice of my family. And so I let her know I can't do this anymore. So when she was calling when nobody else was home and I'm just doing housework and doing this, like, okay. But God, one day he's like, yeah, she just calls you up when she knows that it's just you at the house. And she talks to you five days a week for two hours. Have you noticed, though, that she won't talk about anything for you? Like, what's going on in your life? And God point blank tells me, she's not your friend. And I was like, what do you want me to do? And he says, I'm going to walk you through this. So there came this moment where uh, she... I was going through something, but I didn't tell anybody because I generally don't. And she calls me up upset and she says, you have been on my mind for over an hour and you won't go away. And, and that translates as God keeps putting you on my heart, but I don't want to deal with it. Mm -hmm. So she's all angry at me. <laughs> and I, in my heart immediately looked to God of like, what is going on? God's like, you don't need to talk to her. But this was the truth. And you don't need to talk to her again. I was like, okay. So, no more having phone conversations with Diane. Okay, not that too many months go by. And there's another friend. We've been friends for a while. Um, and this one we'll call Susie. 
and uh, Susie now, like whenever I send a message or I try to call, no response, but um, she's sure sending me a lot of text messages of pray for this, pray for that, pray for this, right? And God starts tapping me on the shoulder again. And he says, she's not being a friend. And that's when he, he took the two things and he showed me a puzzle piece. And he says, you have a shape that attracts people with a mindset that want to take, 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 because you give, give, give. So God, he says, I'm going to hide you away for a while. And we're going to reshape your puzzle piece. And I didn't know what that would look like. But that was the journey we went on. What had to happen was God had to help me see where I was overextending a gift. But also where I had wounds and blind spots. Or um, overzealous mercy. <laughs> and he was reteaching me so that I could start to have friends that were friends. So I just wanted to bring that up. Now, that's the kind of the negative aspect of everything. Good night, sweetheart. Here's the positive. Okay, say you have a large desire, okay, to become a triathlon athlete, okay? And you know, though, to reach your goal, you cannot try to train with people who are couch potatoes, right? So what do you do? You start to go where the other athletes are and you start to interact there. You start to hang out. You read up on, on different techniques and training schedules and uh, health stuff and, and things like that. What you are doing is you are actually reshaping an aspect of your life, creating a different puzzle piece. And this one doesn't technically have just only to do with relationships, but it's also what we get out of life. I hate the saying that I've got nothing but bad luck because the reality is, yes, there are things outside of your control, but your mindset is really opening the door or keeping doors closed a lot of the time. And if you apply yourself to seeking God and saying, I really want this, would you help me walk it out? Then things can be reshaped, reformed, and strengthened so that this becomes your normal. So just something to think about as we go through things.